you know, you, you tell these stories of you at Google X and maybe we just take a minute here and, and like you saw things most people would never see, Mo. And Absolutely. like that's why you don't hint on it too much in the book, but that's why I'm listening a little closer than I might to other people because I mean, you were steeped in this world for a long time. 100%. You also yeah. understand the ethos of the world of scientists, of coders, of anybody on the cutting edge of innovation and how it can be such a, an intoxicating thing to want to solve these problems that, you know, come on, humans from the beginning of time have wanted to create a machine that becomes smarter than us. It's, it's the ultimate human fantasy, even a caveman might have thought about it. And to be yeah. able to be on the cutting edge of solving perhaps the most challenging problem of humanity, you know, it's, it's, it's strange. I mean, I had a, a, a flashback to an Oppenheimer moment, you know, where Oppenheimer famously dra dra dreaded that he created the atomic bomb because, yeah. you know, at one point he wanted to and the other point he thought, well, I can't put this back in the bottle. Of course, that hasn't killed humanity yet. But can you just talk a little bit about what it, was like being you, being in Google X, seeing some of the things you saw, and then is that also why you left? No, a hundred percent. I mean, th th there are two sides to to uh, to people who worked on AI. I, you know, I, I, to start with, I think we need to acknowledge that nobody wakes up in the morning and goes like, "I'm going to screw up today and make everything awful." Okay. Everyone wakes up in the morning and does something that they believe is the best thing to do. And sadly, sadly, a school shooter wakes up in the morning and goes like, I'm going to go to school and, and shoot people today because it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I have a good logic in my mind, you know, why I should do this. And it's from a school shooter to people who are waging wars on other nations. They have a good logic in their mind while they're doing it. Now, there are two sides of developers. One of them you'll see in, you know, when I say developers, I mean developers, organizations, everyone, the whole team. One is what you saw in the in the social dilemma, the, the documentary, if you've seen that. And the other is what you would see in a, a, an incredibly scary video uh, by uh, um, an AI researcher, a very renowned uh, AI researcher called Hugo de, de Garris. Uh, it's called uh, Singularity or Bust, which you can find on YouTube. L let's talk about the, the, the social dilemma first. So when I joined Google, I joined in 2007, and I was vice president of emerging markets. I was assigned the responsibility that to me, I think, and honestly, truly in my heart, believe that I was blessed and honored to have that opportunity to change the lives of 4 billion people or more. Right. So, so my task was to start emerging markets. At the time, there were seven markets, sort of commercially on Google's map, but they were not really pro properly technologically advanced. And then my task was to take Google's search and YouTube and all the other technologies, including the ad technologies, to 103 other languages, four billion users. Okay, what a privilege! I mean, when you really think about it, the Google I joined, believe it or not we were still accounting for most of our revenues on uh, on uh, uh, on excel I, I had i had probably 27 28 reviews with larry page when he was our uh, uh, ceo uh, never once asked me about the revenue never once like to the point that one day i i said larry i mean i put at least a day of my team's time to prepare those revenue slides for you. And by the way, we spent the last quarter, a good chunk of us were trying to make those numbers. And, you know, don't you even care? And, and he looked at me in, in a very typical Larry way and said, well, Mo, you know, if we create, if we create cr great products and they're solving problems and helping people improve their life, you guys at the business will find a way to make money. Okay. And, and that was truly the mentality of that company. It was in every possible way, a movement. And in every possible way, it's an it was an amazing movement. And I wouldn't lie if I tell you, for the first 10 of the 12 years I spent at Google, I would have paid to work there. I was capable to pay to work there, and I would have definitely paid to work there. Until something happens. Something happens when you're in the market, when you have quarterly targets, when you grow 
Hmm? So we were accounting on Excel, but you can't account for $80 billion on Excel. So you have to bring in, you know, proper general ledgers and, you know, ERP, and you have to bring in CRM and you have to bring in the bureaucrats, right? Which, by the way, is not a bad job. It's just a job of someone who doesn't want to break any rules. And the bureaucrats come in and take over the company. And then the objective doesn't become organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Like I promise you, we all believed. It was the only reason we woke up in the morning. The word don't be evil was mentioned more than the word how much money this will make for us. Okay. And then suddenly you have to report to the to the street every quarter. And you are over flooded with bureaucrats that care more about guardrails and revenues and so on and so forth, that you no longer are able to do anything. And then suddenly the tech becomes not for us, but more against us. Okay. And and I, I say that about every technology. I love Google. I owe it my life. I will tell you that. And I think it's a very ethical company even today under uh, uh, Sundar. Sundar is an amazing human being. But the reality is that the system hmm, is forcing the company to make decisions based on targets that are different than the mission. Right. And that's when technology goes off. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, it's Brian Rose, founder of the DeFi Academy. I've told you my four-week crypto bootcamp is amazing, but don't take my word for it. This is what my students are saying. The DeFi Academy was an amazing experience for me. It took me totally out of my comfort zone. In this course, I was challenged. I was held accountable and pushed to do things that honestly weren't always easy. It's been phenomenal and I can't believe uh, we're already up on our four weeks. It has flown by. Going through this DeFi accelerator by far was one of the best courses I've taken. You do this course, you really get into the nitty gritty of the activities that will make you comfortable with decentralized finance. Thank you so much to Brian and everyone at London Real and the DeFi Academy for even putting together an amazing course like this. Anybody else that wants to do it, please sign up. It is well worth the money.